Hey everyone, this is Scott McLeod. We're talking about the coronavirus and its impact on schools uh, across the country and around the world. I'm lucky enough to have with me Ruth Heron, Director of Curriculum and Learning. Did I get that title right? <laughs> um, yes. At American International School of Guangzhou in China. So uh, Ruth will have some good perspectives for us. So Ruth, obviously uh, there in China, uh, the international school was well ahead of schools here in the States in terms of crafting a response to the coronavirus and so on. Tell us a little bit about what um, AISG did uh, in response. Yeah, well, um, I guess you could say we were lucky enough that we were all on Chinese New Year break at the time whenever the news first hit. So we had about a week and a half to get all of our policy changes and our plans ready to go. Um, so what we did first is we implemented a new online learning expectation policy, uh, like outlining what do we expect from teachers in the primary, middle, and high school. And about a week later, we also implemented a new assessment policy online. Um, as part of the leadership team, we've been in constant contact trying to pivot on a dime and meet each of the new uh, problems that have arisen. Um, so things like at the beginning, we didn't want any summative assessments. We just wanted those formative checks for understanding, collection of evidence of learning. And that obviously, once it went past the original two weeks into what we're now on week eight now, um, it went into, well, okay, we do need to start collecting evidence of learning. We need to have some type of summative assessment. So what does that look like? Um, and so right now, one of our biggest issues is we're trying to figure out how to do a report card for a semester where some of our kids haven't interacted with us because they either can't or they haven't responded to emails, or, whereas other kids are, you know, constantly interacting with our teachers. So, Ruth, you bring up an interesting issue here. What do you do with the students who disappear? Yeah, well, that, if you figure that out, you let us know. Um, <laughs> We're working on that right now. We're trying to think about the re-entry plans for next semester. When we come back to school in August, late July, what do we do with those kids who show up and we haven't talked to them all semester? Um, and so we wanna come from a place of compassion, um, of understanding, but we also need to make sure that we're not leaving those kids behind or doing them a disservice. So um, really, I think we're just going to have to be as flexible as possible and ensure that there is clear and open communication between the subject area teacher, mm -hmm. the administrator, and the parent. And we'll figure it out as we go. But So right now, we're going to try to put that policy into place, but who knows what that's going to look like. Um, it'll be something to the effect of having the kid and the parent explain like why they weren't in contact and then getting that one-on-one -on -one help at the start of the semester. Yeah, absolutely. So Ruth, as you think about how you've been trying to support staff, support families, support students, what seems to have been working for you so far? Oh gosh, um, so we have tried uh, everything, you know, and we're, we're very blessed as a school because we, we come, our, our students all have devices, you know, they come from families that are there to support them. Um, we don't have issues like you see with some schools where the students maybe aren't going to be able to be fed or cared for. So we're starting at a comfortable place and we have the technology ready for us. Of course, with China, you don't have Google or YouTube, Facebook, any of those things, but we have those systems ready and set up. And that's thanks part and parcel to our incredible IT team. Um, one of the things that we have noticed has worked really, really well for our teachers and our students is taking a step back from large online classes or synchronous classes and switching to asynchronous learning, doing more lessons that are away from the screen. So getting kids off of Excel files or off of Microsoft and doing something. Um, and also one-on-one -on -one, face to face Zoom meetings or Microsoft team meetings. Those have been the most important to our teachers and the, the best way that they can connect with students and really help to meet their needs. Of course, this is difficult in classes where, for example, our performing arts classes, where they have you know, 170 kids that they need to meet with. They can't have those personalized one-on-one -on -one calls with each kid. 
but those ones that need intervention or extension, it's really easy to intervene that way. Um, especially with our counselors offering emotional support to our students, even if that kid doesn't reach out to them, they've been able to tell the kid and the parent, set up an individual one-on-one -on -one call, and most kids respond to those uh, questions from counselors, and then it's hard to say no to a one-on-one -on -one call. So. Yeah, got it, okay. So where have been the biggest challenges? Where have been the sort of the biggest struggles in, your, in the school's transition? Oh, got, um, clarity, uh, knowing what's going to happen in the future, um, insecurity. Uh, our teachers are spread across the world. Um, we're worried. We, we haven't known when the deadline to come back is. We don't know what to do, so we're having to make those decisions ourselves. I often joke that I just wish I had an adult to tell me what to do. Like, should I go back to China? Uh, when are classes going to start again? How will I make sure my family is safe and care for the kids that are in my, my, like if I had children, how would I educate them and work at the same time and what's best for them? Um, so I think dealing with that insecurity and not knowing what's coming has been the biggest stressor for our teachers. Um, I would follow that up by saying, those kids that aren't reaching out and that aren't engaging in lessons, um, that has been a huge stressor for our teachers. We're very worried about those kids. What is happening to them? Why, like, why can't we meet their needs? And what, what are we going to do about them next semester? Got it. So Ruth, you're back in Missouri now, but yep. you know, China obviously, um, you know, you said you've been at this eight weeks, whereas most schools in America are at it one or two at most. So what advice do you have for American educators and American schools as they head into the next month or two? Um, you've got to monitor your screen time. Uh, make sure you take some time off. It is incredibly easy. And what I've seen with our teachers and our administrators is that we are working twice as long hours and we're working all during the weekend um, and it gets to you. Um, and so making sure you close everything down and step away, get exercise, um, do everything twice as slow, three times as, as slow as you would expect a lesson to take and do not expect to complete whatever curriculum you have set up for that year. It's not gonna happen and that's okay. Focus on what's most important and connect with people on an emotional level. Um, something that I started with our teachers after noticing that there was so much stress or of loneliness or isolation was we started doing uh, weekly BYOBs, bring your own beverage, coffee, tea, beer, wine, whatever you want, depending on the hour of the day. And I do it with the, uh, Diana Biaval, one of our incredible innovation coaches. And we sit down, open up a Zoom space, and anyone's welcome to join. You bring your cup of coffee or your wine, and uh, you just hang out. Um, and so trying to connect our community and ensure that people don't feel isolated has been a big concern of mine. Got it. Uh, Ruth, this is amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Anything else you want to share here as we head into our last couple minutes? Um, just, I think having, coming from a place where you assume good intentions from everyone and also coming from a position of compassion has been really important for us as an administrative team and as teachers. Um, we're all trying to do what we think is best and none of us know what the right answer is but we're all working off of the information that that's there so um i think just continually connecting with community and being compassionate has been a lifesaver for us as a team awesome ruth this has been fantastic thank you so much for your time um this has been another episode of the coronavirus chronicles as we check in with schools all over thanks <laughs>